Okay, here we are. Uh, another episode of the Day After Podcast. Uh, episode 2 just released. And- yep. at war, and I gotta say, um, we had a strong opening, and this was still a very strong episode. Uh, and we discovered a little bit more about the game. Um, there are idols in play on the island, hidden, but they have a little twist to them. Yeah, yeah, they're they're kind of like the uh, what you had to do for the super idol back in Korong, yeah. but they're just a normal idol. Yeah, which I feel like in an all winners season, like it has to be harder. It can't just be like a simple idol. You kind of have to like, like in this game, everything kind of has like a check and balance. So no um, advantage comes without you know some sort of sacrifice or disadvantage. You know. Um, yeah. With- well, well, why I like this is now it's actually rewarding social players and social games because now it's not just those guys who are on the house who have to go find an idol to save themselves. Now, if you're that person, you can't really do that. You have yeah. to have at least someone uh, on your side. Because I know for Adam and Ben, uh, you know, they would have been toast if they didn't find the idol because they were you know, they were on the outs. They were kind of screwed their season for a little bit. And, uh, you know, the times where, you know, like they needed it, they found it. And uh, so um, this time around, having an idol like that, uh, it's definitely one where, um, you know, like there isn't going to be like a, I feel like a deus machina in a sense. Like you have to really work for it this season, which I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and including with that to extinction, you know, when you send people there, you you if your social game is strong enough, they might help you out in return. So, um, the, the this season's definitely going to the roots of social games, which I which I'm totally for. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, like um, first, just like um, with how if we go to the blue tribe, you know, like how Danny's social game has been terrible. Uh, well, it wasn't terrible until this episode. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, she was insulated. She, like, there was no reason to get rid of her at this episode if she did nothing. If she literally yeah. just stayed still, she would have not been voted off. <laughs> it got to her, and it's like, I don't know, there were a lot of paranoia things um she definitely was someone where i was like as you know i'm not a big fan of hers but um when she was doing stuff like that i'm like this is this is why this is why i don't think you belong because like all she had to do was stick to the old school alliance she's good and she uh now granted sometimes when you're talking and talking and talking sometimes you let things loose uh, but to not be aware, especially when it comes to alliances and all of that stuff. Oh, let me talk about an old school alliance in front of one of the biggest wild cards on our tribe. And I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, no. Uh, so so I, I did like Danny, and especially in this episode, I really liked Danny because it was just seeing some of the worst gameplay ever. And it just it was it was hilarious from start to finish when she when she literally said that and Ethan's just like hey you know uh you know this guy's not a, an old schooler <laughs> it's like Danny almost didn't even realize <laughs> yeah and I think that, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that she hasn't been watching Survivor so I think Ben yeah. who was who was around their same age she was just like ah oh, he's gotta be an old schooler. I guess that I guess that kind of um, plays a factor in it because yeah. you know you're not up to date on everything, and plus you know a lot of the old schoolers we're talking people that have played you know below season twenty, you know a lot of them are up there in years now, like forties uh, or yeah. like fifties. It's like so I guess like subconsciously maybe, but it's still like ouch you got to know who you're aligned with when you talk about this stuff they it wasn't like ben was there when they had the old school you know like 
meet up where they're like, okay, so we're going to have strong. But man, I mean, to be fair, she's not the only one that made a bad gameplay this episode. Oh yeah, no, uh, the, the 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 reason uh, I think this episode was great for a totally different reason than last episode because this had some of the worst gameplay in a, in one episode. This this was just nothing was really sticking. Everything was just all over the place. It was it was great. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the um, the idols and uh, well, I mean. Um, Denise found one and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, gave it to Adam, which when Denise was like, should I give it to Parvey? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and like, like it, my, my inner fanboy wanted it to go to poverty. Cause I just want to see poverty with an idol again, but <laughs> I want to see her go further in the game. Don't get me wrong, but like, yeah. I can help but be like, that is probably one of the worst ideas you yeah. should do. Yeah, well, uh, we should also point out that Ben helped Denise find the idol to some degree by teaching her how to find idols. Well, I mean, it's kind of like what he said, where um, kind of in Tony's case, like being known for, you know, idol hunting or doing crazy shit, you kind of have to calm down this time around. Otherwise, you're a you, huge, or otherwise, you know, like it just reminds everyone, oh, yeah, this guy's the target. And, uh, or give, because any everyone's looking for any reason to get rid of you, uh, it, it, and like as everyone is saying, Jeremy said it uh, this episode. Sandra, it's her motto: as long as it's not me. And yeah, yeah. I, I do have to say, last episode Ben played terribly. This episode, I thought Ben played great. I thought Ben uh, uh, finally stopped playing like a goat after yeah. episode one because <laughs> episode yeah. one he he was totally playing like a goat he was literally just gonna be one of boston rob's foot soldiers um yeah i mean it looked like it especially with like when you admit you got starstruck yeah i mean yeah. that's not playing up strong but um ah but i mean speaking of gameplay um on the opposite end him yeah kim i mean she found an idol she found I, an idol. She, she gave did. it to the wrong person, but she found an idol. <laughs> it's like, as you know, she, I initially I thought she was going to win this game. Uh-huh. Now it's like, and it's it's <laughs> she's just in her head, man. Like right now, where you know sometimes when you're not thinking straight, you make some of the biggest blunders or dumb moves. You know, like in any strategic game, you know, you kind of have to keep calm and actually think this out. And yeah, extending a olive branch to someone on the other alliance is, you know, it is a good idea. But when it's an idol, yeah, that's a bit risky. Like, yeah. and you're giving it to Sophie, who's a duo of the biggest power alliance on that tribe with Sophie and Yule. Yeah, and they like, aren't real. Uh, I don't know they're really with Kim right now. It doesn't seem like it by Sophie's confessional. <laughs> no. Um, no. And I'm like, it, it, it's sad in a way because it's like she has, you know, like, because she dominated her season and now it's like, yeah. oh, crap. Like, yeah, I, I, I think I think if she wanted to get into that group, if she gave it to Yule, I think that would have been way better for her because she could have done what Yule did in his season and being like, "Hey, I'm trusting you. This is this is our my me trusting you and all that kind of stuff." And I think Yule will accept that because he's like, "That's what I did. I I totally believe in that." Also, Yule isn't as much of a wild card in the sense as Sophie. While Sophie, yeah. I feel like she also needs to prove herself this season. Yeah. Because she was a vengeful winner, you know, like, and obviously people say that, and like, they're not dumb of their reputations. I say, you know, we understand how, you know, Spider fans perceive them. And so, like, I feel like she is someone where she wants to try and, you know, be like, hey, I did earn my win. Um, so we'll see how that really plays out. Um, and so, yeah, I feel Kim needs to get her stuff together. Yeah. Like she's like she said, you can have a rough start, but really kill it in the end game. 
But uh, now that she got one advantage and kind of took it away from herself, it does kind of yeah. make it harder. What what I'm getting from her right now is she seems like someone who's going to go out right before the merge, like like the vote right before the merge. I I don't necessarily doubt you. I don't want it to be true because I'm yeah like, I don't oh, want it to be on. true either. I like Kim. I th- I I but the thing is she's never played from the bottom, and she is panicking so much on the bottom that she's making irrational decisions and irrational moves. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, that this is the toughest thing about this season is you don't want anyone to go home early if they're your favorites. But this is yeah. a season where reputations will be. And yeah, I do have to say though, out of uh, the first three gone, none of them are my favorites. Like that's crazy. The fact that no legends have gone home in the first three tribal councils, it's crazy. Which I'm, which I'm thankful for. And <laughs> yeah. Sense. In fact, um, let, let's look at so it. I mean, uh, the, 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 there were probably three people in this season that we thought were going to be conceived as goats, and two of them are on edge of ex- extinction right now. Yeah, yeah. Because like, the only one I left thought, is, like, Michelle. Legit, I thought Danny was going to make it closer to the end because, you know, like, it was goat. I didn't want her to win, but you know, right, and does the goat thing. You know, yeah, I, I, I thought she. I thought she was possible. making it all thirty nine days, without a doubt. But uh, I mean, like, they kind of. Um, I forgot who said it, but it's kind of true. It's like you know, Rob is the mafia king, and uh, <laughs> you know, like you go against him, or, or like going after you know Harvard, which he decided is you know his number one now since uh amber's not it's like you go after the mafia boss you're done um it's it's crazy to think about because it's like these people should be targets yet everyone's scared of them but it's like we know that this is a number and yeah it's just um baffling granted they don't know that um he doesn't have any advantages yet um except for an extra fire token but um, from what we've seen so far, you can only use those to buy advantages. Um, yeah, or, or things off. around camp, which he's not going to do that. <laughs> no. I mean... I, I want to see if anyone actually does that. I don't... If, if this was a different season where it's all new players, I can see it, but no. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't... I wouldn't imagine anyone doing that. Not even to, like, you know, get rid of the tokens to, not seem like right that's like no you yeah. need those tokens those the are only only scams. only thing that i could see doing that is an advantage in the immunity challenge for the team yeah because if, if you realize like oh no i'm probably next maybe help your team to make sure you're not next <laughs> that it is that that is one i would spend it on but like if it's something like comfort an extra yeah. bag of rice or even chicken like, yeah, that's, um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, speaking of these advantages, so Natalie, um, I do like how she's really playing the game over there um, yes. on the other side. Like, I granted, like, we won't know who's all there or when they're actually going to do uh, the um, challenge to get them back in the game. And if they're going to do two people or if they're just going to do it one at the very end. But it's like, so far, she's really, you know, like, shaping up um, to be, like, she's out there to play, um, yeah. even if she's first. Which... Yeah, she, she already has two fire tokens. If she gets one more, she gets an advantage in the challenge. Like, and yes. and uh, right now her competition is Amber and Danny, which I feel like she's going to beat them regardless. <laughs> Sure. So, sure. so, out, so out of the three people there, and my my guess is there's going to be seven people on Edge of Extinction, and then the one person will come back. It could be eight, because if they do the classic uh, thirteen merger, or I wouldn't say classic, they've been doing that since. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but um, like if they do the thirteen merge, uh, 
then maybe it's um, going to be able to eight people fighting for their way back. Unless I, I, heard, I heard that they wanted to do it earlier, that they want to start m- turning the merge earlier because they that's when they think that the, the show starts. In some regards, I do believe so um, okay. because it's like more of like, yeah, I mean, everyone loves to merge. And, you know, like also it's like a milestone. It's like, oh, I hope, you know, that's kind of like the one landmark everyone who's rooting for their favorites hope they at least get to like yeah open tyson gets to the merge uh yeah. or you know like i hope tony makes the merge if he does it exactly it's like we we at least worst case scenario they're the first one out during the mer- or like that's what we want for our favorite contestants we want them to win but if they make it past the merge it's like okay okay their their reputations aren't so diminished. Yeah. You know? But um yeah. Um so it, I mean it honestly depends too who they vote out if they're going to start um getting serious players out or not. Like and we never know. We never know. Yeah. Um, I mean yeah Boston Rob he he's still a killer on challenges except for, you know, the puzzle today. But you know Well I mean that's <laughs> because Bro, bro, this when he saw that Amber wasn't there and his fears were realized, I was like, "Oh shit! I have never really seen this man so low in his yeah. you know, ever on Survivor." Yeah, like, yeah, we 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 got like pit, like shots of him in the challenge, and he was clearly still upset about it. Yeah, and it's like, dang. I didn't know love until I saw that. I was like, yeah. oh, shit. It's like, you know, on one episode, oh, one uh, thing, the romantic that I try and tuck deep down inside because feelings are hard is like, oh, man, wow, that is that is love. But at the same time, it's like, Rob, don't, uh, <laughs> got to get that out of your head. But it, like, totally messed with him. And, you know, like, to be fair, he at first his try he was killing it at the puzzle. It was only when um they went to like all right now we have to do two sides let's split it up and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean to be honest I thought that was a sound strategy but apparently not. No um, it's, yeah it's just better just to get in there and be putting it together at the at, on the spots. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah it, it just. Like like I um like you said, this is not an episode where everyone played their best. And mm-hmm. uh yeah, I mean like and this immunity challenge it was very back and forth um for quite some time. Yeah. And you know, like people were catching up. It was just like when it came to the second part of that um puzzle challenge, that's where the game just kinda like <coughs> Yeah, I do have to say, so far it looks like the Red Tribe is better at challenges, in my opinion, because the first one they won pretty easily. Second one, they were in the lead for so long, and then it was a remarkable comeback that the blue team had to yeah. do to, to get back. And then this one, um, uh, the just the, the puzzle was a blowout. I know. I feel if Rob was able to be collective, it could have been a different story. But yeah. I guess it's another thing, like, we won't know until next episode, too. But, yeah, I mean, like, Red Team is pretty strong. But, like, in every single instance, uh, when Blue Team shows, like, their strength, except for this episode, it was really, like, Rob that was, like, the um, standout. I mean, Jeremy last episode for, like, just killing it on the ring toss. But, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say Red has a lot more... uh, strength as a like team yeah yeah um and i'm glad because that has tony on it and i want tony to get through every tribal <laughs> that's me with tyson i don't want him. i don't want him to go yeah oh the thing is with uh in kageyan uh tony didn't go to he only went to like one tribal council in the pre-merge he basically like skipped the pre-merge section and went to the merge I'm sorry, I only heard part of that. Oh, because... uh, in, in Kagayan, Tony only went to like one or two tribal councils in the pre-merge, and then he just went straight to the merge. And he needs to do something like that again, because in the pre-merge, he is a huge target. But once the merge happens, 
he becomes a great meat shield for other yeah. people. <laughs> I feel, especially because he is aligned with, um, you know, Sandra, and now uh, Cops R Us is back. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. It is smart um, for them because obviously first season, I think um, Sarah put it best, you know, like, you don't really know these people, so you're kind of, like, looking for any reason to kind of, like, have that, like, you know, alliance, like, any common ground, and, oh, they're both cops, they kind of think the same. Um, and since, you know, like, they've known each other for six years, they even said it was, like, you know, they've grown together, and, like, even in, uh, when they were doing Game Changers, uh, Tony beforehand was, like, coaching uh, Sarah, it was, like, all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They do have a tight bond, and so I feel like this time around, Cops R Us is uh, going to be stronger than ever. Yeah. Is he going to make it all the way? I don't know. Um, I feel like, um, I mean, Tony has proven himself to, like, you know, swear on his mother or anything to get further ahead. But at the same time, we are seeing a different Tony a little yeah. bit. Uh, it, it's funny with the whole ladder thing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Like, we got to get to this. <laughs> I feel that he put there is a life lesson in what he is saying of like, so instead of going around doing idols, I'm just going to put my uh, energy towards making a ladder. And it's like, you know, that's very philosophical. Instead of putting your crazy out there in a world that can really screw you up. Do it on something <laughs> like <laughs> making a ladder or uh, do it on something that won't affect your social game uh, or like your life. Just ladder. Yeah, I, I was honestly know. afraid that Tony was going to be a medevac this season. That was going to be the worst thing ever. <laughs> no, I didn't think he was that in danger of it. I was like, he, I mean, the first he, rung literally broke yeah. underneath him. <laughs> and then he was I like, I need to push. I Wendell to help him out with that. That was another thing. It was like, yeah, Wendell, they, you know... They, they, they made... put him back up there and was like, you got this, Tony. <laughs> well, I mean, if he gets himself killed, one less person you have to worry about gets you closer <laughs> to the merge. That seems pretty heartless, even for Survivor players. <laughs> Didn't they have something similar in Heroes vs. Villains where uh, I forget who was trying to get like the coconuts and it was kind of like very, very wobbly up there? Um, I forget. I know it was one of the guys that was on the villain stride. Uh, was oh, it Boston yeah. Rob? Tyson? It might have been. Yeah. It could have been Coach. Okay. I know it wasn't Randy and I don't think it was... Uh, Who's the other guy villain? No, I think we named all the guy villains. Well, anyway. There's Russell. Russell, yeah. Russell yeah, was it, it 100% wasn't Russell. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't I'm pretty Russell, sure he was the one Randy. who was talking like, I hope he dies up there. <laughs> Probably. But it's like, you know, in the mentality of like, you know, getting further in the game, sometimes, yeah, like your inner competitor, you know, would have rather have voted him out or outwitted him, but at the same time, it gets you one step further towards your goal for two million dollars. So, I mean, let him do his thing. Um, you saw the promo for our next bit, um, next episode, right? I did not. Whoa, 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 what's going on next episode? Well, I'm not going to say the whole thing. Well, just say what it is. One more thing. Uh. So let's just say there are a lot of sharks in Survivor. Sharks in the pool, sharks in the water, and sharks in uh, Tony's hand. Tony gets like a baby shark. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, this is why you watch these things. It's so bizarre. It's like, you know, he just has the you know, shark in his hand, and he's, like, coming out of the water. I guess he wanted to be, like, Richard Hatch, and, like, I caught a shark. Yeah, he wants to uh, spirit Richard Hatch because he's not in the season. Exactly. And, and it's coming back to that thing of, like, 
oh, put your energy into other crazy things instead of burying yourself in the sand or, uh, you know, just going for until hiding, um, but hunt, eh, idol hunting and declare it to everyone, just, you know, play with a shark. Uh, I think that's what uh, Tony, his strategy this season is. Just yeah. be crazy. Just don't be crazy when it comes to gameplay. Yeah, and I love it. Like he's he's great TV. He is entertaining every time he gets to talk. Yeah, that's true. That is very very true. Um, like I know you're rooting for him. I also don't want him to go as well. Yeah. And so like each time he like, he at least has to make the merge. <laughs> he yeah. at least has to do that. <laughs> Uh, okay, gotcha. well, we still have to get to Tribal. We haven't actually talked anything about what happened at Tribal. Okay, so, I mean, I know Danny's name was out, Harvardy's name was out, Ben's name was out. It's like... And Jeremy. Jeremy uh, was out a little bit. I mean, and he got that... Uh, his advantage is pretty oh, good, too. Oh, yeah, he, he bought it from uh, Natalie for one fire token, yeah. where uh, he can pretty much just say, peace to a Tribal Council. <laughs> Basically, was given that because, or basically, he was given that because he still has his original fire token. Yeah. Because Natalie gets it, and it's like, so basically, it was like, uh, he was holding on to that fire token. It's like, all right, here you go again. Yeah. So, um, thankfully, he didn't play it wrong. Um, you know, he was smart, kept it because mm. you know, uh, I was a little bit worried for a little bit that Parvati was gonna go because, yeah. um. Where you know, officially putting it out there that there's old school um, versus new. School. Um, I thought Harvey might go, and I didn't want to live in that world where Harvey is gone pre-merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm gonna do a little story here. Uh, so I typically watch, you know, Survivor after the fact on all access and all that stuff, and all on on demands. Um, but yesterday I was like, hey, I'm gonna watch it live. And for some reason, I thought it started at 8, but it starts at 7. So I tune in, and then I see Danny's torch getting snuffed. Oh. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> uh, so I, I, the entire episode, I knew he, she was going home, but it was just like, uh. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Uh, for me, I have to do it all acts. Well, First of all, I was, like, working last night. Also, because I do have, like, because my grandma, um, I can access Xfinity on my laptop. But they're very, very weird about it. It's, like, certain channels um, you can only do if you're in the in-house Wi-Fi, which I'm, like, I know why you're doing it. But at the same time, come on. Um, but, yeah, I was watching it this morning um, before my run. And then I was, like, oh, crap. Uh little uh, like uh, i didn't want her to go um danny i was like okay okay i'm okay with danny uh not necessarily because she's on my like team too it's like like she's a member of my team where i'm okay with i'm like you know i don't want to go to make it too too far you know like but modern survivor <laughs> goes are kind of like necessary yeah but I mean, uh, she, she was like your third pick or something she was only my third pick because I thought she was going to be ghost. <laughs> uh, it, um, if I was doing it with my heart instead of my head, she would have been closer to the bottom of that list of who I wanted to win. She, I think it would be like between her and Sophie, really. Uh -huh. But, um, I don't know. Sophie's playing a very similar game to how she did in South Pacific. She has her coach in Yule, and yeah. you know it could happen again. Even though I don't think anyone wants that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't think. Um, like I said, I feel like especially since this is you know an all winter season, and no one wants to like lose to someone who is um, you know basically kind of floated to the end i think this season more than ever you definitely see like you know people having to fight for it and like it's definitely like a more strategic social game mm -hmm. um so i definitely so i don't think that um 
there's going to be like a vengeful jury like we've seen in the past when it comes to uh, gameplay. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing going against Sophie. Um, no vengeful jury. I don't see it happening. Yeah, exactly. This 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 jury 100% is going to value who played the best game out of the three there. I don't even know if they're going to look into like uh past like like stories and stuff that the people have like 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 Ethan ba- battling over uh 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 lymphoma. I I I don't I don't think that they're even going to look at that. I think it, they're going to really look at it as who was the best winner. Yeah, exactly. I I agree, and that's what I like too. It's like, like, granted, Jeremy kept keeping the stuff about um, his daughter um, in uh, Second Chance. Like, I get that, but it's like this time around, we uh, they all kind of have their own story in their own regard. Um, and then again, Jeremy didn't have to say that even at Final Tribal. It was he was the like clear winner of that season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's. So, like, um, I think, like, what I'm hoping is that we get a lot of, of the uh, less player, player-like player players to go out first, and then we have, like, an all-out war when it comes to, like, you know, um, merge. Yeah, um, imagine if the merge happens and all the legends are still there. Like, how crazy would the season be? That'd be insane. Um, like, even if they then went all in a row from merge onwards, it will still be like crazy. <laughs> I, I would be a little happy about that. Um, one of the reasons is because Rob either goes really far or he goes pre-merge. Yeah. It's like so far that is his record. I, um, I think, I think he's going to win back in edge of extinction. I think he's going to be one of the two people to come back in the game. Well, I mean, because he is very, very good at challenges. Like, Team wise or individual wise, so I can definitely see him uh, winning his chance back in the game. Yeah. And then obviously, uh, if they try and get him out at four with the fire challenge, not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's played Survivor too many times. He knows how to make fires. He literally was like, "Don't challenge the fire king." Um, yeah, and on Island of the Idols, one of the challenges was beat Boston Rob at fire making. <laughs> exactly. And there's just no way. Um, and so what ha- uh And so yeah, it'll be interesting. So it, it's funny because next episode, uh, they're talking about all right. They might be going after legends on the blue tribe, and then on the red tribe, Tyson uh, might have name dropped Sandra, and then Sandra. I'm like, did you not Ooh. learn? Your- Less than the first time, Tyson. Come on. I'm like pretty sure that Sandra and Rob are going to be on the same tribe at some point. Because I feel like they're setting up this big war between the two of them. And it, one of them it, is going to go home and one's not. <laughs> definitely. Actually, I feel it might, but they both have their own. Like, I, I kind of want to. Oh, how do you always feel about tribe swaps? Because for me, I've not always been the biggest fan of them um they can uh, make the game exciting if it seems like we haven't had a lot of change going on uh between the tribes but at the same time it sucks because sometimes someone in such a great position just gets screwed over yeah. and they they really don't have anything to, to they can't do anything <laughs> i understand i feel like i don't necessarily mind it if it's a non theme season. Like, if we have something like bronze versus brains versus beauty, it's like, all right, let's keep it like that. But Survivor had a habit of, like, you know, oh, we have this cool theme. Let's mix it up and kind of get rid of it after four episodes. And it's mm-hmm. this one, it's, you know, still winners at war, but I still kind of like the dynamic of, like, you know, both uh, Sandra and Boss and Rob being on opposite sides until the very end, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I kind of think that we have one more tribal, and then they're gonna do a tribe swap. That's in my heart. It's a part, probably what's gonna happen. Um, at the same time, I don't know. I don't want to see the tribe swap. Um, yeah. I mean, if it gets Tyson out of a jab, 
um, out of a jam, I'll appreciate it. But at the same time, it's like never really been a big fan of them. I'm like, let's play it through. Um, mm. This like, there's I... more impressive gameplay that can come out of being from the bottom there, as opposed to the, oh, tribe swap. Yeah. Okay, now I have. Merge. I'd say I probably enjoy when there's multiple tribe swaps pre merge because at least then uh, the power dynamics gets mixed up so much that by the time we do get to the merge there's no clear line on who's on whose side that's fair that's fair especially when you do like that uh swap to three tribes yeah is that really um because when it comes to that you really have to play hard because like we've said before when there's like five people on a tribe there's really nowhere to hide kind of have to like really play it out yeah exactly and like i would be totally fine if uh in fact this would be an interesting thing to happen actually and i don't know if they would do it but at 16 three tribes of five one person goes to edge of extinction until the next thing and can potentially get uh, advantages along with the people on edge that's a possibility. Um, that would be that would be interesting because they would be able to see what's going on over on edge and potentially help themselves in the game. Definitely. Um, I mean, I can definitely see it because with how everything has been playing out, this is a season where uh, a, like you said, it's a very very social this time around where you don't really get advantages just by stumbling upon it. Yeah, it's really how how you play the game and how you use what you have um and then also the fact of like because if they do it kind of like what they did with um survivor edge of extinction these people are going to be on the jury Um, so it's like you know you can also do some like jury stuff there and plus it it's like oh you know i leave a good impression on these people i might get an offer further down the line oh hey you're offered this um thing for one fire token so if you make good with them you might get those offer uh, offers more often yeah exactly exactly um so i i think that would be an interesting little twist um but i just don't know if they want to do that if someone's still in the game to go over there for a for a day or two i don't know (laughs) um and we still haven't gotten to the biggest thing that happens at tribal boston rob getting everyone to drop everything in their bags. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, was... wait, but before, before we even get into this, what the fuck is wrong with their bags? Like, what is happening with their bags? Did you notice them? They were all, like, this uh, blue, all, like, like kindergarten like... tote bag. <laughs> yeah, they look like, um, like satchels and stuff, and then it's, like... But they um... were, like, such a weird color. Like, they weren't, like... Your typical survivor colors. <laughs> yeah, usually like a little uh, knapsack. Too. Yeah. And they, they were like big. They were like giant laptop cases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, um, I did find it, or it's like not something I focused on. I was more like because of the hidden idols, because uh-huh. uh, Denise was able to hide hers pretty well. Yes, yes. But it's like, you don't really. Uh, it's like, you know, I feel like that might be a thing that might start being a trend now because, you know, like now ev- when, you know, people would come back from, uh, you know, um, Island of the Idols, you know, they have to show that they have like an idol or anything like that. And then now it's like, OK, that I feel like this could be something that is going to be meta relevant. Um, but then again, so many people hide it on their person. Mm-hmm. Sandra hiding in her bra um, yeah. last season. You know, yeah, and honestly, I don't think anyone could have done that except for Boston Rob. Imagine if Adam was like, hey, everyone needs to dump their bags to see if we have an idol out there. They would be like, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, Mafia King, like, I mean, it's just he has so much power, even though he's the biggest threat. Yeah. And it is, you know, like, you got to give the, these legends props, like. No one wants to go after Rob and people that name drop Sandra. People are still, you know, like, oh, yeah, let's stick with Sandra. 
it's it's crazy like how much power they actually have in this game yeah Based yeah that. and it, it, it by the grace of the survivor gods denise and adam were on the other side of boston rob because imagine if they were right in the middle right next to boston rob they yeah. would, their, their idols would have been found <laughs> exactly um well that was lucky for them and then uh who knows they uh who know who knows how they'll play it or um if there is like this thing where an island an idol nullifier comes into play too and it's like with um every episode introducing some kind of like new advantage into the game i'm interested to see and like uh how it kind of shapes everything because so far the blue tribe has two different advantages by different players actually yeah um that one of them has well jeremy has the thing where he can just uh, skip a tribal council and then you know obviously an idol so it's like you know as um we get further along in this game you know like it'll be interesting seeing like oh they have this advantage but if they use it at the right time with this person it can help them or yeah we just have to see yeah yeah and there's one more iconic moment that happened at this tribal probably the most iconic moment of the season so far adam couldn't get it in the hole oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised that doesn't happen more often or at yeah. least they, what if that does happen, they kind of cut it out. Uh-huh. I guess maybe it just happened for so long. I love how Jeff was like looking at Ben. It was like, help him out. Yeah. And then Ben immediately is just like, nope, you're over here, buddy. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, uh, I, 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 I laughed pretty hard at that moment. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fun because, uh, you know, Travels are stressful um, this season, and so like that little levity, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what that's what I miss in Survivor, and I feel like last season didn't have as many of those moments. Only Nora was the one bringing those moments to our TV. Now everyone's bringing it to our TV. Hey, <laughs> we got uh, Janet flashing. Janet flashing, that did happen. Yeah. Yeah, that was. <laughs> That was so, so awesome. It was like, <laughs> it's like, I mean, it had its moment, even though that last season, you know, a lot of crap went down. Um, it still had its uh, shining moments, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, but, yeah, you, you just gotta go through the the giant turds to get to to get to the shiny diamonds. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Oh, I thought we. Were, are we spoiling Birds of Prey? Are we? Have you seen it yet? I haven't. Did I just make a reference to Birds of Prey without realizing it? Yes. Oh, jeez. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a good sorry movie. everyone who uh, hasn't seen Birds of Prey, including me. It was more my fault for thinking you have seen it than making that joke. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Anyway. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, next time with Survivor, it looks like, um, some legends might be targeted and Tyson might be in danger and, uh, and Tony might be eaten by a baby shark. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that the shark eats Tony and then takes his place in the game. That could be a new twist. <laughs> animals start playing Survivor. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I think I think that's about it for this episode. <laughs> yeah, I think we. This is the first time in a while it's under an hour too. I know, right? It's, yeah, we started just keep doing really long ones. Now we're we're at forty four minutes. Good for us. <laughs> Yay! Hey, I think it's mostly because of my rambling, but <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. <laughs> okay, see you guys in the next one. Peace out.